Join me on this deep dive into the EV6 and Ionic 5's Highway Driving Assist 2, Augmented Reality Head-Up Display and Navigation. I'll go into depth on how these work, where they don't work and show you how they use cutting-edge technologies like machine learning. The Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ionic 5 are packed with some of the latest technologies, including Highway Driving Assist 2, Augmented Reality Head-Up Display, and Navigation. If you're confused by what all these systems are, let me explain. Navigation is the easiest to understand. It's a system that provides directions to get from one point to another. Head-Up Display is a projection of certain information typically seen in the instrument cluster onto the windshield. Augmented Reality Head-Up Display is when navigation information is projected on the display in real time to make navigating easier. Highway Driving Assist is the system that provides level 2 autonomous driving capability on the highway. Highway Driving Assist 2 is the next generation of the autonomous system that adds features like automatic lane change and machine learning of your driving style. Keep in mind, you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times and be ready to take control of the car at any moment with the system. The manual devotes about 31 pages to these systems, so there's a lot to cover. Of course, when it takes 31 pages to explain something, it begs the question of is the system too complicated? Hopefully through this video I can simplify them for you. I'm driving the extended range Kia EV6 GT line all-wheel drive. Since the GT line is the top trim, it has all these features. Depending on the different trims available in your country, you may or may not have some of these features I show you. Same for the Hyundai Ionic 5. So let's jump right into showing you some of the augmented reality head-up display features. I'll start with the city route and then show you a highway route. I film these segments on multiple different trips. Here, I've already entered the destination into my navigation system and I'm backing out of the parking space. You'll see that it immediately tells me I need to turn left. As I approach the road I'm to turn on, a series of arrows appear telling me that's the road I need to turn on. You'll notice that when I come to a stop, they disappear and reappear when I start moving again. I'll let this go through a couple of turns to show you how that works. Turn right onto Howard Avenue and then turn right. Turn right onto El Camino Real. Now I want to show you another situation where I'm on a city street. You can see that it recognizes the speed limit. If I exceed the speed limit, the sign turns red to indicate that. Now you can change the offset from the speed limit for when the sign goes red. You can set it to 5 or 10 miles above or below the speed limit. Here's a situation where I'm approaching a roundabout. For roundabouts, there are no special augmented reality arrows. You just have to follow what you see on the screen and follow the voice prompts. Take the exit. And here's what it does when you arrive at your destination. The destination is on the right. You have arrived at your destination. Your route guidance is finished. Now I have used the navigation enough to know that sometimes it tells you if the destination is on the right or left 
and sometimes it doesn't, which can be pretty annoying. What is impressive though is how quickly it recalculates the route if you go off course. Usually it's within a half block or so, as in this case. Route recalculating. Turn right onto Cormelita Avenue and then turn right. There's a few other impressive features I want to show you. The first is called Leading Vehicle Departure Alert. If you're behind a stopped car, which then moves ahead, and you don't, it gives you an alert. Another neat feature is the red light camera alert. In point two miles, traffic light camera ahead. It changes the speed limit sign to one that has a camera and signal light and also gives you a distance countdown on how far you are from it. Once you arrive at the camera junction, it gives you a reminder chime. Pretty cool, huh? So let's get on a highway route where I can show you more HUD and HDA features. I'll bring you in to where I'm about to get on the freeway entrance ramp. Now this is a tricky situation. The speed limit on the freeway is usually 65 miles an hour, but because of construction, it has temporarily been reduced to 55. You can see as I get on the ramp that the speed limit changes from 35 to 65 because that's probably what the map has this freeway coded as. But then it very quickly sees the new sign of 55 and it adjusts the limit to 55 also. But that actually doesn't last very long because in just a few hundred feet it changes the limit to 65 even though because of construction it is still 55. There is no 65 sign, so it must be relying on map data to make this change. It also changes the maximum speed of the highway drive assistant, which means that if there wasn't a car in front of me, it would have automatically sped up to 65, 10 miles above the speed limit. And that's not good. As you'll see in a bit, that incorrect speed limiting becomes a problem again. But let's backtrack a bit so I can bring you to the point where I engage the HDA and pause there so I can show you what all these symbols mean. The green steering shows that the lane keep assist is active and the car is steering to keep the car centered in the lane. If it's gray, it means it's turned on but can't find the lane edges. The green HDA shows that highway driving assistant is active and it will maintain speed and distance from the vehicle ahead. The green nav means that a few features are being controlled by the map information. This includes slowing down in curves and automatically changing the speed if the speed limit changes. This symbol shows the current maximum speed. If you make single clicks on the rocker, that will change the speed by 1 mile an hour. Push and hold changes it by 5 miles an hour. The bars in this symbol indicate the distance it's maintaining from the vehicle ahead. You can toggle between 1 to 4 bars, but only in decreasing bars. So if you want to switch from 1 bar to 2, you have to go all the way up to 4 bars and then work your way down to 2. This is your current speed. This is the next navigation direction, and this is the speed limit. Then there's this hovering UFO-like symbol. The manual describes it as front vehicle indicator if the car is equipped with lane change assist function. Other than telling me that it's tracking a vehicle ahead, I'm not sure if it's trying to tell me anything else. Is it telling me I can't effect an automatic lane change while there's a car ahead of me? Or something else? But that UFO does get bigger as I get closer to the car and smaller as I get further away. Nevertheless, it's a cool graphic. Now I've been showing you what you see in the HUD. But here's what you see on the instrument cluster. There's a neat graphic of the traffic surrounding you and a white blob for the car ahead of you. There's also information about the HDA systems similar to the HUD. Now we're coming up on a freeway interchange, so this is a good time to talk about the navigation. 
In my opinion, the navigation screen is very cluttered. There's a lot of information being thrown at you. There's a graphic for the upcoming interchange and which lanes you should be in. More lane guidance information, the distance to your destination, the ETA, the time, the speed limit, just lots of information. Over time, I've learned to focus on just two things, the next turn and the one after that. I've learned to tune out most of the other information because there is so much of it. Another feature I've learned is putting the map in auto mode. This has the map zoom in and out based on your speed. I find the varying levels of information at different speeds very helpful. It's easy enough to enter the destination. My favorite is voice control. Go to San Francisco City Hall. Two results found. Please say the line number. Number one. Would you like guidance to this location? Yes. The guidance will start now. You can also enter the destination using the keyboard. So far, I've found that the routings are pretty good, although not as good as Google Maps. And the traffic information and ETA are pretty accurate. One major shortcoming is that on long trips, it does not plan the charger stops for you. So back to the interchange. A mile before the ramp, it alerts you with an arrow and a voice message. One mile, take exit 414B on the right to California 92 West. And then, as you get closer, it gives you a series of arrows. These arrows are the same when you take an exit off the freeway. As I'm going to the interchange, I pause the HDA because it doesn't automatically slow down the car on ramps. There's an immediate series of lane changes I have to make when I got on the new freeway. And there are cars merging in. As with any other automated drive systems, it can't handle having to negotiate with merging cars. Once I've gotten past all that, I re-engage the HDA. Now the speed limit is 55 and everyone is going faster, even the trucks. If you feel the need to keep up with traffic like I did, you can step on the accelerator to override the speed limiter. The HDA speed limiter and distance symbols will flash to show that they are not in control anymore. Now I'm approaching another interchange where I go from this freeway whose speed limit is 55 to a freeway whose speed limit is 65. I've done this many times and once I'm on the new freeway, the car automatically recognizes the new speed limit and accelerates the car to 65. Unfortunately, this time, as you'll see, it got thrown off by the fork for the ramp. and the HDA ended up cancelling. So I wasn't able to show you how it automatically increases the speed. But something else happened that I didn't expect. As I merge onto the new freeway, it recognizes that the speed limit is now 65 and brings the car speed up to that number. However, very quickly, it misreads another speed limit sign and starts reducing the speed to 55. At that point, I intervene because I know the freeway speed limit is 65 and manually set the limit to 65. Now that speed limit sign we just passed is one of these and applies only to trucks and autos with trailers. However, the car misread it as applying to all vehicles. It actually keeps it that way for quite a few miles until it passes another 65 sign and corrects itself. Interesting that it doesn't use map data to correct itself earlier. Now that we're on a freeway with less traffic, let's talk about how the highway drive assist performs. On straight sections, I found that it's constantly making left-right, left-right adjustments to the steering wheel. If that gets annoying to you, you can just turn off the steering assist and the steering symbol will disappear. The lane keep system is deactivated and is not keeping the car in lane anymore. I found that on gentle curves, the steering does just fine, but on sharper curves, it's a little late 
and I have to pull the steering into the turn. Now, as part of the HDA2, the car has a feature where it will slow the car down in tight turns on the highway. During all my driving, I've yet to encounter such a condition, so I haven't been able to test it. Another feature I haven't encountered is the driving to one side within lane. As the manual explains it, if a car in an adjacent lane is close to your edge, your car will move itself away from that car to the other edge of your lane. A neat feature I have been able to test is the auto lane change. While HDA is on, you can simply turn on your signal, the car will check the surroundings for you, and if safe, will gently turn the steering and move the car into the next lane. Here's what you see on the instrument cluster. Now here is a really interesting feature. Machine learning is the next frontier for automotive tech. Mercedes is using machine learning in its zero-layer hyperscreen to learn the driver's habits and bring up suggestions for them so they don't have to dig through multiple menus. Well, Kia is using machine learning too, and it's impressive to see it being used in a car at this price point. With the HDA2 technology, the car is actually learning your driving style while you are driving. It is monitoring how you maintain distance, your rate of acceleration, and your reaction speed. When you engage the HDA, by default, it is using your driving characteristics it has learned. You can find what it's learned by going into the smart cruise control settings. In my case, it's probably been a little tricky for the car because my husband Brian and I both drive the car using the same profile. He's a little bit more lead foot and I'm a little bit more light foot. But based on the settings it's showing, this definitely looks like to be Brian's driving style that it's learned. You can also adjust these settings manually if you like. While it goes to the driving style characteristics by default, you can also change the driving style to be based on drive mode instead. You press and hold the distance bar button and you'll see that the bars turn blue. Now it will adjust the distance, acceleration and reaction speed based on the drive mode you are in normal, eco, or sport. I did do some testing putting the HDA in these different drive modes and comparing it to the one based on the driving style, but honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. Perhaps it needs further testing or maybe the differences are subtle. But even though I couldn't tell the difference, I think it's really impressive that Kia is implementing this kind of machine learning technology. So here's what I think about all these systems. Overall, the navigation system is pretty good, other than the cluttered screen. Everything is in line with what I'd expect, and the auto zoom is very helpful. The road sign recognition technology definitely needs work, but to be fair, I find the same problems in other cars also. The lane keep assist is annoying on straight roads with the constant left-right, left-right adjustments, so that needs work too. I do like the lane change technology and the machine learning tech is definitely intriguing. But the best feature is the augmented reality head-up display. I think that is super helpful and is a big plus. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into these tech systems. Please consider making a donation using Super Thanks. It will support the many hours that I put into making these videos. Please give the video a like, share your comments below, and subscribe to the Driver Download.